Hi, you. This has been a crazy week, two weeks. So I was on vacation for about a week and a half, two weeks after being on the road for almost four months, three to four months, and had a great time. We had an Airbnb. Uh, great time spending with uh, the wifey. Finally get back on the road. Uh, what was it, last uh, Monday. Pick up a load in El Paso going to uh, Roanoke, Indiana. And uh, good run. 15 small 100 miles plus about 130 uh, paid deadhead miles. And I get all the way to uh, you know, scheduled to deliver on Friday. Uh, Wednesday, I'm like, sweet. I'm going to pull in there Thursday uh, about 2 a.m. Nice. I'm in Missouri, pulling up into uh, Pacific, Missouri. And boom. First problem in over 300,000 miles in this van. The very first problem we've had with this van blew the transmission. But in this process, that was Wednesday. So uh, Thursday morning, where I was able to, to limp the van to was a uh, the pilot right there in Pacific. And uh, luckily there was a Dodge dealership only a mile away. Uh, so I crashed out the pilot, uh, limped it down there. Um, I had basically drive this automatic, kind of like you would a, a stick without a clutch. So it, it, every time I'd come to a stop, I had to put it in neutral, put it in gear, immediately start fluttering the gas to get it going, and uh, it, it, it did the job. Get down there, and I sit there for about four hours, three or four hours, for them to say, yeah, you jetted the transmission. It's, it's done. We get the quote, all this crap, and it's like, wow, that's crazy. So, being a holiday weekend, um, they had to they had to order all the parts to rebuild the transmission. And it's, it's per my contract with my fleet owners, it's my responsibility to, uh, you know, supply my own hotel, my own, you know, housing in, in situations like this. And some people may, you know, scoff at that because not all companies do it that way. Some companies do. Regardless, I signed the contract. I'm fine with it. I can't bitch about it now if I sign the contract. I see a lot of people doing that. They really complain and bitch that, well, my owner won't let me do this. My owners won't let me do that. Is it in the contract? Did you sign that contract? That's it's your fault. It is what it is. My, my owners don't pay me enough. Did you agree to that amount of pay when you when you hired on them? Then it is what it is. You got nothing to bitch about. Go somewhere else if you don't like it. I happen to love where I'm at. I'm fine with it. It is what it is. So... Being that it was a holiday weekend, we weren't going to get parts until Tuesday, and I could either get in the hotel, leave the van sitting at the, the shop, and spend five, six hundred bucks uh, on a hotel over the weekend, and then a few, a couple more hundred bucks um, while they're working on it. I said, you know what? Let me just limp the van back to the pilot, and stay in the pilot Thursday, Friday, uh, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. Five days in the van, sitting there. Normally, it's not a big deal to just be sitting when you're waiting for a load or something like that because you can go find something to do, you know? I couldn't. I, you know, if I tried to limp the van anywhere, my luck is going to just stop running, period. So I was stuck there. I had no no way to go anywhere. I decided to catch a cab down to Walmart. That was 20 bucks each way. And it was only like seven miles. And it, it's too small of a town for an Uber. So that was crazy. Um, and then on Tuesday, I limped the van back to the dealership. They had most of the parts there, still waiting on a couple of them. I got a motel, or a, a Super 8 motel, which I was thinking Motel 6, which if you guys haven't stayed in Motel 6 lately, they stepped up their game. They're pretty nice. They let uh, the moose in there for free. Uh, wood floors, which is great because you don't have those old crusty carpets. So I get into the Super 8. Um, old crusty carpets, third floor, no elevator, had to pay for Moose to go in there, I could smoke in the room, but Moose found the stairs going up and down to go outside, a blast, it was like a carnival for him, 
So he had to go outside all the time. So you can say Bubba's legs and back are a heart. Um, so that was what it was. And finally got the band back on um, 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 uh, Friday, Friday morning. And of course, my uh, fleet owner called me. They called me and said, uh, you know, so what's going on? I'm, you know, in the hotel waiting for the call to tell me that it's ready. And they go, so, uh, hey, man, you know, we hate to tell you this, but we, we can't afford to do it until next week. Um, so it's going to be another week. I'm like, uh, all right, well, you know, here's what it is. You know, I believe me, of anybody in the world, I understand money problems. So I don't get upset. I'm just, okay, you know, all right. And they went, no. We got it. It's all paid for. Go get it. And I was like, "Yee, send it." Be. I like them. They do the kind of shit I would do. <laughs> but anyways, I get it, and I'm like, "All right, finally, I get back to rolling." Because you know, two weeks off, half a run done. Uh, oh, speaking of which, one of our other vans had to come rescue the load out of the back of the van to con- continue the run. So I got paid the the 11.50 that I did. Um, which wasn't much, but it was something. Uh, so Friday, I'm waiting around, waiting around, hoping for a load. You know, I'm outside of St. Louis. I'm the only one in the area. Nothing's coming across. Damn it, I'm going to sit here the whole weekend again. And I get a call for a deadhead to El Paso. Deadhead from Pacific, Missouri to El Paso, Texas. 1,180 miles-ish, somewhere in there. Hey, empty. Yes, that's awesome. I love it. So I get that run done. You know, on a deadhead, you don't have a specific time you have to be there unless they state, you know, we've got this load waiting for you or whatever. But this was just go there. El Paso is hopping right now. So we're just going to move you down there. We got more business down there than we have vans. So I figured, well, I'm just going to drive it straight through. I left 3.30 uh, Eastern Time, Pacific, uh, or uh, from Pacific, Missouri. And I got to El Paso at 9.30 this morning. Uh, so I just drove straight through. Almost hit one of the biggest mule deer I've ever seen coming down 54 in New Mexico. I'm going to see, I, I saved the video off my dash cam. Um, but I've got a cheap ass dash cam. I need to get a better one that has a night vision because he was standing right on the white line. And this was about 4, 3 a.m., something like that. And it's dark as hell. And I don't have my brights on because there's other cars coming. All of a sudden, you see the monster rack. Not the kind of rack I like seeing next to the road, but monster rack. I mean, if you're a driver, you know that feeling. It scares the shit out of you. Thank God he was off the road, because I would have smacked him. There's no doubt. That would have thrilled my owners. <laughs> but hopefully my, my dash cam catches that video, because he was huge. Probably one of the biggest ones I've seen in person. Uh, but we'll see. If, if it's in the video, then we saw it. So I get to... Uh, to El Paso, call him up, kill my deadhead, I'm here, and I hang up the phone, I grab my, what do I do, I start crawling in the bed and ring, I get a call for another load going to Roanoke, Indiana, <laughs> but this one picks up in like four hours and drops the following night, I have to turn it down, I mean, I've been driving, I've been up for 25 hours, and now I have to do basically a straight shot. It, it's not safe. It's, it's couldn't do it. So I turned that one down. That got passed on to somebody else, I'm sure. Uh, a little bit later, I find out she's holding the load for Monday in case nothing else comes up. So I wait throughout the entire day. Nothing else coming up. So I call, leave her a message. And I was first one out. But I'll go ahead and take that Monday load. Picks up at 10 o'clock Monday. Runs over to Royal Oak, Indiana again. But the cool thing is... I'm only an hour and a half, two hours from home. I'm on my way there to surprise my wife. She has no idea. She thinks I'm on the load to Roanoke, Indiana right now. But I'm about an hour away from home. So I'm going to surprise her. Spend uh, a couple nights with her. See the pups. Smack my wife in the ass like she deserves. And uh, all will be good. And hopefully next week we got back on the road rolling. And uh, I hear my eyes are killer right now. So. We'll see. I rambled on a long time right here. We'll cut out a lot of that. Y'all, take it easy. Be safe.
Hit that like button. Did I hit your face? Did I hit your face? I didn't mean to hit your face. Y'all take it easy. We'll talk to you later.